Hey, welcome back to the channel, you guys. On today's uh, episode, what I'm gonna do is uh, I just picked up these uh, new V-Land headlights. Uh, they've been out for about a year now. I've been kind of eyeing them. I was gonna pick them up, uh, you know, one of these days just to kind of test them out. I, you know, before these came out, I actually built myself a set of 2011 uh, and up um, DRL headlights. I used the Depo aftermarket ones. I retrofitted them with uh, LED projectors. I retrofitted the LEDs and the LED strip so they would be brighter than the OEM ones. And I put a lot of work into those and I kind of like that look. But, um, you know, recently I saw the, the, these VLANs uh, online on sale for a price I couldn't uh, pass up. So I just I picked them up just uh, to do a quick, uh, you know, review of them. I'm gonna do a really in-depth review. Yeah. Bake them open, take them apart, see all the components inside, see the build quality. I just show you guys what's inside of these things. I know that they've gotten a bad rep, uh, you know, from a lot of people. A lot of people love them for the look and the sequential turn signals and the DRL and all that, but that people hate the output, they hit the high beam, you know, they just hate the, you know, overall quality, the hit or miss quality on them, I guess, because some people have leaking problems, other people, you know, they're, they're fine with them, but I guess it depends on the weather climate you're in, how much rain you get. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna open them up, see, you know, look at all the seals, see how well that's all done. Once, once I'm done with that, I'm gonna put it all back together. I'm gonna install them on my car. I'm gonna take actually light level readings of an original OEM, um, actually I had it right, my original 2007 OEM projectors that I took out of the headlight already. I still have my, one of my original Philips uh, OEM bulbs in them. So that probably simulates better what you guys may have on your vehicles, depending on how old your car is and uh, what, you know, what condition it is and how old the bulb is. But these, I think I, uh, I switched to uh, Osram CVIs at one point, so they were, they probably had like five or six years on them. So they, they, they're more likely what kind of output you would get out of your car. So I'm gonna actually measure the light levels uh, against the garage with the light meter. With this guy, I'm gonna measure it with that one and I'm gonna measure what's on my car now and uh, kind of give uh, you know, three, you know, three different readings to see how that all stacks up. Um, but in addition, uh, I didn't really buy these headlights originally to keep them anyways. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do on this channel for all you guys that are, are watching my channel and subscribing to my channel, once I hit 5,000 subscribers and 20,000 views on this, uh, these headlights or this video that you're watching right now, I'm going to go ahead and, and give this away to my viewers who registered for the drawing. So uh, go ahead and, uh, email me at tunerwithkids at gmail.com. I've got it right here uh, listed. And uh, email me your, your uh, YouTube username, and then you know I'll have your email then. Uh, I'll put you on the list for the drawing. And then uh, you know don't forget to subscribe over here with the subscribe button right now uh, to the channel. And that way, uh, you know, once I hit that, um, you know, the, the, the was it, was it 20,000 views and 5,000 subscribers on the channel. I'll go ahead and do the drawing. I'll have a video of it and I'll, I'll end up drawing, um, you know, four or five people and I'm probably just end up throwing it, throw a dart, you know, at the, the wall or something to get to determine who the winner is. The only thing I, I ask is that uh, since I'm giving them away that you pay for the shipping. So if you're in the U.S., that's much easier if you're overseas if you're willing to pay the overseas shipping you get it to you then uh you know you go ahead and register and you know if you win then that we'll, we'll talk about it then but you know it's much easier if you're in the u.s and and do it but uh you know i just you know i want to i want to give back to you guys that are watching my channel and subscribing and then watching all my diy videos so you know let's uh go ahead with the review now and unbox these This ship is very, uh, very tight in the box with the foam pieces and everything. Perfectly cut foam pieces on them. Looks like uh, you get the, the harness for the DRLs uh, to the car, and then there's a there's an add a fuse to add to the fuse box to get power to to them. 
first impression is that these things are very clean looking. I, I opted to order the, the ones with the clear reflector here, that they make one with a amber reflector too, but I, I like the clear uh, black and white, black and chrome, black and silver look. So that's why I ordered the, these versions, but they keep in mind they have two of these. Uh, you know, just check out the description below. I'll, I'll, I'll have links to these. That mostly you'll find them on eBay, but there, there's some sellers that sell them on Amazon also. So I'll have links to both places. Build quality. Initially, the lens looks very clear. You can see all the details inside very nicely. These uh, right here says VLAND YZ. You've got your usual DOT SEA type uh, markings on them. Uh, not really any other markings. The, you can see that everything is nice and crispy on these. Uh, it's like, you know, the, the seal, seal on it. Use your regular headlight. Looks like the headlight butyl seal on it. Um, one thing I noticed that uh, the, right here, some of the double-sided tape for the rubber looks like it's coming loose, but nothing, a little heat and just, pushing it back in won't fix. I think this piece was right here I saw was coming off when I was initially opening it up. Looking at the lens and everything looks looks nice and, and clean here. One thing I did notice looks like uh, it, I don't know if this looks like an auto, the, the auto level motor is actually on here, which is kind of surprising because I was expecting it not to have an auto level motor, but this looks like an auto level motor because it has a harness going into it. This is a auto level harness right there. It goes into into the plug. I could definitely tell the plug is very lacking on the number of wires compared to the OEM one. You've got your you know ground, high beam, low beam there, and then you got the the wires for the three wires for the auto level motor, and then the sign turn signals. That's really all I see. Yeah. This wire must be the DLL wire, which is a separate wire that you have to run to the the car. So overall, very simple. It did seal this with looks like hot glue, which uh, I don't think that's <laughs> a car approved method of doing it with the oem you know you just have those rubber gaskets or grommets in there would do the job but they kind of went overboard and did that one so very interesting that they have the auto level motor i didn't expect that i thought it was going to be a static uh setting on that one um, as far as adjustments goes uh headlight adjust so this looks like it only comes with the vertical adjustment here uh which is i don't see any other adjustments uh, unless I guess this this counts as an adjustment too, but this is not accessible on the vehicle. Um, on the OEM setup, that is the, actually the the horizontal um, knob to adjust the horizontal height of this. Uh, the usually the vertical knob would be somewhere right here, but they don't have that on on this version of the headlight from them. The the plastic looks you know your, your usual China plastic on that. So I'm taking a look at the bottom side of here. It looks like they have the LED driver mounted on the bottom here. So it's external to the headlight, which is good if you have to service it or anything goes wrong with it. Looks like you have the, a, used to be a hole or should have been a hole here if, if they needed that. It's for a wire harness or a turn signal or something. So they're not using it on, on this housing. They got your normal vents, your, your, your air vents for the, uh, you know, ventilation, the headlight for moisture and condensation. Um, I'm actually gonna open these up. Uh, just normal in and out wires for the LED. Um, very light on this one. They've got a, a nice water seal on here. Just pretty good uh, multiple O-ring seal for that. Cap off here, see what's in here. Access to um, looks like the back of the LEDs, the each LED projector, and then the wire harness for each one, right? The, the, for each LED chip there, it's not uh, the same as the OEM auto level. Uh, I actually have took the OEM auto level down right here. This the OEM auto level is actually sits in the hole, and then this ball joint pops into a, 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 um, a leveler on the headlight itself, but. So it looks like these, they since they eliminated the adjustment screw on the top here, they're actually using the bottom as the height adjustment screw. So it's actually connected to a, a rod, the, the adjustment rod. If you look at closely on the back side here, so you can't uh, 
Yeah, you can't just pull pop that right out like uh, like a factory o OEM one. So it actually sits in just like that. And I've actually seen these on other um, aftermarket uh, plug. The plug is also different. The factory one uses four wires. This one only uses three for the auto level on that. So that's, I don't know how that corresponds back to the, the car and uh, if it really affects anything on the, the blinking. Most people, if you have auto level you're, you're, or AFS, you pull the fuse anyways. For 2011 and up, actually with this being here, if you have HIDs now, you should be able to plug that in and your the auto level will actually work on that on your car. You know, it'll actually adjust up and down when you start the car up like it's supposed to. Just because you, you won't have a flashing AFS light since this motor is actually in place there on, on the newer ones and they don't have swivel side to side on the newer ones. I'm not sure if uh, the 2011 DRL OEM ones are by Xenon or not, but I know the the six to 10 uh, HIDs, those normal ones are by Xenon. So I'm gonna do the test with this projector to kind of simulate the factory HIDs uh, output. I've got my original uh, Phillips bulb right here, the brown, the one with the brown ground wire. Uh, this is the original Phillips that came with the car that I replaced when it was about five or six years old. And then these are the Osram CBIs, which are the cool blue intense bulbs. I got these when one of my OEM bulbs burnt out, the other one burnt out. So I got these from a retrofit source back then. They've got some hours on them. Uh, I used them for maybe two years, two and a half years on the IS. And then they've been on the my Sienna for about a year, year and a half now. So we do a lot of night driving. So. They've got some hours if you can't really see it in the camera but they're the salts you can see the salts are kind of uh, starting to get near the end of their useful life um, when you look at the inside of the capsules so i'm going to test them to see how well they do they compare in the, inside that projector at the same distance and uh, measure the lux output on them. So I took the headlights out and you can see some of my old wiring for the 
my other headlights there. I had a little time delay, 10 second relay for my DRLs. I had some other wiring. This relay was for the dimming circuit on my DRLs on the other headlights that I made. I had one on each side. It switches between high and low on that LED driver I was using for that uh, last retrofit I did. And the rest of the stuff is just really um, for, uh, I used to have some little LED scanners inside those other headlights that failed due to heat. So that I had that where it would trigger on when the DOLs were off and the car was off. So I'm just gonna leave all that right now in place. I'm not gonna use any of it for the new headlights, but I'll still leave them there. As for these uh, Depo halogen D DRL headlights that I retrofitted with the iLens projector, they're, they're still in perfect condition. There's really nothing wrong with them after about two years of use. When I was taking them off, I did notice some little stress cracks right here where it mounts up to the top of the fender on, on each one where the bracket goes. The, this one, yeah, you can see right there, there's like a little stress crack. On my last retrofit, I actually had a little leak up here. I had to re take these apart and reseal them with some more Buto. So you can see right here, that's that's where that was. Um, it was uh, poorly formed when I put it back together the initial time. See, so yeah, I used those uh, Morimoto brackets to kind of hold the headlight together the last couple of years. So I think I've got three of them on each headlight and uh, they've kind of worn down over a year and a half, two years of use. So right now I have to transfer the brackets and all that stuff over to this guy so I can use it over here. So before I install the headlights, I'm gonna follow directions that came with this thing. So it wants you to wire up the DRL power to the fuse box right there where you pull that fuse out and then right there, that little add a fuse. And then the rest of the instructions tell you to basically pull the AFS fuse inside the car if you uh, have HIDs existing. So this is pretty straightforward. To do it correctly, I would actually you know try to pull the wire through like I did with my other setup but for this one I'm just gonna probably just do it like what most of you guys are gonna do just kind of tuck it on the side of the door. So I installed it one of the things I noticed is that uh, the one that they they give us is it's this right here is so it's a blade type that kind of goes all the way in the the fuses that this car uses is more of a low profile so you can see that you know where that little piece actually goes inside the fuse this thing is not really the correct fuse the add-on fuse that works on it but it does go in like if you you know you stick it right there you got to make sure that it's kind of in there and you know compressed in so that way it doesn't vibrate out for some reason because the if that thing falls out you're going to lose basically ignition uh, power for the car so if that ever happens you'll, you'll know that's the issue on my setup um, I, I try to use that ignition ignition is this last one and then this 10 is uh, the electronic fuel injection the, the way I had this where I, I try to get it you know like tucked in there perfectly because if you turn it the other way the wire gets in the way right here unless you trim this little spot with the Dromo it won't fit in there so I ended up using electronic fuel injection which is also kind of an accessory the only thing with the electronic fuel injection is uh, these cars usually in the middle of the night they have a timer setting where they it primes the fuel pump for some reason I know this car does it and my Sienna do, do it so every night it'll come on for like 10 minutes or five minutes and it'll actually you know the DRLs will be on and all that but um, you know it's not it's not a big deal it won't it's not on and not long enough to drain anything so but uh, yeah for this setup I'm going to use that few spots that, that they want for the ignition
seven and a half right here, the L or H L P L V L. So that's headlamp level, so seven and a half. So what I just ended up doing there was I moved the sensor for the light meter down to the where the both the step beam and the, the straight cross beam kind of line up together and the light output went up a lot more than it was when I just I was just getting it right there at the step. So since these are, are dual projectors, that's a probably a better gauge of the output where the two beams meet, so you got 780 right here. As you can tell, the high beam on this one is pretty high fluxes, but it is very, it's not very wide. You can tell, see it's just one single beam that's really bright for distance. But as far as width goes, it provides zero width for high beam versus your traditional high beam. So here we're going to test the top and the bottom, uh, the outputs. So the top has got the VLANs and the bottom's got the depot with the iLens LED projectors that I retrofitted on my older videos. So as we pull out of the driveway, you could tell the VLANs are pretty spotty. That's because of all the different, you know, there's four projectors and four different beams. So you kind of see the streaks on the ground where the bottom with the eye lens, you can see that it's just concentrated kind of, you know, the hot spot right in the center. And then the width, uh, as far as the width, you can't really tell on the camera, but in real life, you know, the I think the eye lens retrofit is much better. Um, the output on the VLANs, um, it's decent, but it's you know it's not HID equivalents on your IS. Uh, it's going to be better than halogen, I can tell you that, but probably not better than your HIDs with brand new bulbs. If you guys saw the comparisons earlier, you could you could tell the difference um, really on the islands versus the used or aged HID bulbs. But um, here, you know, side by side, you could kind of see the difference right there. So we'll pull back into the driveway right here and you'll see again on the kind of on the garage and see the cutoffs and, and you can see that um, on the top right here the VLANs are kind of streaky from the reflection off the silver where the bottom it's a little bit more uniform on the island. Got it all installed during the day now. Excuse the dirt on the car and the pollen and everything. It is pollen season here in North Florida but um, yeah, this is with the lights on during the day. You can see, uh, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but yeah, the demon eyes, you kind of see it reflecting off the chrome and everything and then in the projector itself. Uh, as far as the fitment of these VLANs go, they fit pretty well. I think I, I had a little hard time getting some of the, the bolts to line up correctly on mine. And then just even the edges here, like right here, it's, it's a little gap there that you can tell there's some gap here. Some of it might be just my fenders being flared out from you know being low, but uh, my depots fit a lot better in this. And this bottom part is just the normal bumper gap that I've been experiencing with mine, like where the bumper doesn't clip into that lower uh, bracket right there. 
same on this side. Um, over here, fits pretty well right around the edges. And up here too. So yeah, so yeah this, this side I've always had a gap because of the, the way the fender flares out from my wheel rubbing. So my stock headlights and the depots had a little gap and still have a little gap with these. You saw in the video, I was trying to put in that little block that sits behind this bumper, but uh, the block wouldn't stick the 3M tape because it's kind of yeah, it's kind of greasy, so it didn't stick very well. Oh yeah, got everything back together and it's looking nice. Let's see, all the DLLs working, custom DRL working. Uh, that third projector that's kind of just glowing. It's not putting any output, but it's glowing, so it looks much better than it did without it out of the box. I really like these things. I wish I could keep them, but you know, once I get those 5,000 subscribers and the 20,000 views, you know, one of you lucky viewers are gonna get these. Check it out. Just follow the directions I had at the beginning of the video, guys. Got the sequentials all running now, too. Hey guys, I hope you like the, um, you know, all this content I've been putting out on these headlights. Uh, for all you new subscribers that have been watching my uh, headlight uh, build on these VLANs, I, you know, I, I want to thank you for watching. Um, if you guys saw at the beginning of the video, I am giving these headlights away as part of a drawing. All I need you guys to do is uh, you know, like the video, subscribe to your channel. Once I get 5,000 subscribers and 20,000 views on this video that you're watching right now with likes, um, you know, we'll have a drawing, but in order to be in the drawing, you guys have to email me your YouTube username and um, you know, I'll put it in the drawing and then when we get to that point, you know, I'll update you on my other videos as I make them, but uh, you know, I'll keep everybody updated, uh, you know, what the progress is and then once we get to that point, you know, we'll have a drawing for the winner of these headlights, you know, all I ask is you guys pay for the shipping. So, uh, you know, thanks for subscribing to the channel, watching all six of these headlight videos I've been doing. I hope you got something out of them, you know, whether it's trying to do this stuff yourself or, you know, teaching you, um, you know, a little bit about it or just even buying these headlights stock the way they are and just putting them on your car. If you, um, you know, if you guys need a recommendation, I've got a couple of links down in the description of some uh, sellers on Amazon and eBay that sell these headlights. So, you know, check that out if you need these headlights. Anyways, um, thanks for watching this video and I hope you liked it.